Okay. Hey there, viewers. I um, am doing a bit of sketching tonight, and um, basically I did one of these last week, and I had some good feedback from a few people who were watching. So I thought I would um, switch the camera on. I'm going to be doing a, a few little sketches here. And there's uh, four reference pictures because I, I honestly couldn't decide which one to do. This is probably the hardest part of the whole painting process for me at times, just decisions and uh, finding uh, a picture that I want to stick with. But look, at the end of the day, I picked out four and I thought, look, we'll see how many I can do. And uh, it's great practice. Sketching is a fantastic way to sort of hone your your skills your your basic watercolor skills you know just with your wet and wet a bit of wet and dry a bit of your drawing skills and you're doing it in a in a way that basically um you know it's a it's a low stress environment you know at, at the moment this this uh, pad that i'm using it has stuff on the back and uh, i didn't really like those other paintings and so it's an old pad i hope the sizing is okay um, but this practice, a lot of the times I find that some of these little sketches that I do, they end up turning um, into proper established paintings afterwards. So it's kind of a, I guess it's it's kind of a whiteboard where you're just, um, one, practicing the skills, your techniques. Um, it's it's kind of like, you know, if you're a workman with a hammer or something like that and you're, and you're practicing how to hit nails, you're not going to sort of wait until the moment where you have to hit a nail to to make sure that you've got that technique right. Same thing here, you're just trying to, you know, get comfortable with um, different techniques, maybe you're wetting part of the paper and you're putting a bit of paint in there, seeing what happens, um, if it runs, if it um, doesn't. So I think it's a, you know, it's a really good way to to, to certainly practice and um, and have some fun. So I think we got a couple of people um, in the chats. So there's Zaneb, Zaneb Javed, and uh, from the Kingdom of Bahrain. Fantastic. Um, I think you're the first person from, from Bahrain. I haven't, I don't think I met anyone from there. So glad to have you here, Zaneb. And Wendy as well in uh, YouTube. So great to have you guys here. There's a few other people um, as well watching. I can see you. Um, can sort of see you on the video so if you're there just reach out say hi um, let me know where you're from and um, yeah if you if you know anyone that's interested just share the the video around otherwise I'm just gonna go ahead and get started and look if you've got any questions during um, you know the time that I'm painting just let me know uh, just uh, pop something into the comments otherwise I'm basically just going to paint and have some fun um, trying to figure out how to paint these scenes. So I've got a bit of an idea, but I've never tried painting any of these before. That's why I love um, obviously doing a bit of a, a sketch beforehand. So that way, um, you know, I can experiment with the different composition for each one. So this one here, firstly, I'm going to start off. Uh, I've just got it up on the screen. Yeah. So this is a, a little, um, little, uh, screenshot here of Russia, a little photograph of Russia. It's, um, this is in Moscow. And what I'm going to do is firstly start drawing out a little bit of um, the horizon line. So firstly, get a box in. I just want to put a frame in here so that it kind of looks like something. The paint doesn't go off the edges. Uh, if it does, it's no big deal. But I just like to have a bit of that in there. Uh, like that. Okay, I'm using a pencil, mechanical pencil. I think this is a this is a point seven, point seven pencil. So, um, just a bit of a square, uh, like that. And um, what we're going to do is we're essentially just going to put in a little bit of the background now. So I'm just going to check the check the chats a little bit for a moment um hey Rhonda nice to see you here what time is it for you uh over there <laughs> it's probably but for me in uh Melbourne this is 6 p.m around 6 p.m so it's a 
yeah, it's a it's a very nice sort of time to to paint. Um, I'll probably grab some dinner or something after this. Um, but for a lot of you guys uh, over in the states, it's probably uh, early hours of, of the morning, and um, if you're awake at that time, you probably should go back to sleep. <laughs> um, so anyway, let's go ahead and get a bit of this in now. The uh, Horizon line is is yeah it's it's very low, and I want to raise it up just a little bit because I I feel like um it will just balance out the composition a bit more especially because I want to get in a few figures, so I'm gonna put in the horizon line somewhere around here so it's almost twice the height um, of whatever's in the the reference and holding the pencil really on the sides as well and I'm gonna just quickly get in some of these shapes. And that's a car, it's just a box. I'm just putting a box, um, little box shape here, and then a couple of wheels at the bottom. And that's it, just a shape of a car. And, you know, I love kind of just playing around with the composition and seeing what we can change around. And I know there's a bus um, here in the corner as well. So we can even add that one in um, like a larger sort of bus and you've got the windshield like that a um, couple of wheels down the bottom there okay and I'm trying actually to paint this one maybe in a, a bit of a monochrome style so hopefully just get in only a few uh, you know marks and things on the paper really you know it's not like those pen and wash ones that I've been doing in the past where you're you know paying quite a lot of attention to uh, every line that you put in here, you can be a bit more, um, just a, just a bit more haphazard with the pencil, okay? Because you've got um, just a bit of leeway there. It doesn't show through when you go, not usually show through when you use the watercolors. Uh, Zineb, it's eleven a.m. here. Oh, that's a great time. It's a great time for you. So, um, fantastic. Uh, so, put in some little perspective lines there. I think what's in the background it's some kind of uh it's definitely it's definitely some kind of cathedral um the shapes of these um domes and obviously some of the features of it looks like some sort of cathedral and what i'm trying to look for is how can i just simplify this down now one thing that interested me about this reference photo is that there's three um basic tones in this entire uh, reference photo or whatever. So there's the ground, which is a really light kind of tone. There's this background area here with the uh, with the what do you call it, the the cathedral and a bit of the wall. That's a kind of a mid tone. And then you've got these buildings on the side, which are almost full tones. And the same thing with those cars. So you've got three main tones here. If you count the sky, the sky is the sort of the light, very light tone as well, similar to the ground. There's three basic tones um, in this. Um, so I, I thought this would be a nice one to, to try out. So let's also get a guy maybe walking across, just a larger figure walking across here. Just getting a leg like that. And who knows what he's doing. I always have people just crossing the road. Um, I find like adding figures just makes things a bit more, a bit more interesting. Um, maybe he's carrying bag or something like that and got a kind of a jacket or something on like this here so there's a little person there and one thing also is try to keep some of these cars a little bit smaller and I, I like to join them up uh, like this as well so that um, there's a few different uh, elements touching each other okay um, and morning, morning, Sandra Hancock. Nice, um, nice of you to join us. A small sort of group here today. Um, so uh, great to have you. Great to have you here. And you know, if anyone has questions, uh, just reach out and um, ask me, and uh, I'll go through it with you. So um, continuing on now, and. Uh, Let's put in this building here on the side. I'm going to start round right about here. You come in, it's it's really, uh, if you look at it, it's just like a triangle. Well, not a triangle, but a kind of this this shape, this rooftop shape like that. 
Um, and then at the bottom, it just sort of runs down like this. So you've got to side of that building. And there's all these windows um, as well, which you know we can mark out and put in some small details and things in here. Um, you know, there's also you know like a not a balcony. What do you call it? These little bits and pieces, maintenance um, areas on top of the roof, chimneys, bits of wire, um, things like that. And I hope this one turns out all right as a composition. I think it I think it should be fine. And um, you'll notice as well the light source is coming almost directly from above. There is a tiny shadow cast by this building in front. Very slight shadow, and same with the cars, almost a slight shadow in front. Also because of the angle of this um, shot that was taken, it's uh, quite low down, you're going to have um, just a, a less exaggerated shadow. You're only going to be see, seeing a slither of it, rather than if the, the photographer was standing up, um, you see a, a, a longer sort of shadow. So it does have something to do with the perspective as well, and but, but really it's coming. the shadow is coming a little bit forward like that. Almost. So, you know, we'll give that a try. We'll make it come forwards a bit more. But as you can see, I've altered a couple of things in here. Uh, now, I'm just looking at this building here in the background and just trying to um, simplify this down as much as I can. Okay, so there's a there's the dome on the roof. Okay, something like that. I kind of made a mistake here. I should rub that out. Um, but I try not to get into habit of using the eraser all too much because uh, you know with the sketch you just want to keep it um, light quick and um, practicing some of those techniques judging distance you know here's an here's another bunch of you know that's another top of the a little dome another one here well like that they kind of look like onions and okay, there's another one there here's another one here okay Bit of detail on top like that and running across the entire street there's all these little I don't know what they are little power lines and stuff like that but I don't think I'll really bother too much with them um, I'm, I may later I may later but I'm not going to um, try to get them in now uh, it might be with a bit of a bit of watercolor later so there we go a little bit of that coming in and the rest of it it just blends down into all this detail here at the bottom really you can't tell that's a side of a building and that's some kind of building um, that could be the rooftop of another building in here somewhere um really that's it there's a bit of a, a wall that comes up here these two um sections just move down a little bit like that it's off to the side there Touch that wall, um, and then got this great big shape um, here for this massive buildings. So uh, that's going to be an interesting one. Yeah, that sort of ends around here. So you've got a few bits, bits and pieces here. That's a door of some sort. Uh, what else do we have in here? Uh, let's you know, let's put in a few little marks and things, uh, but a lot of this we can do with the watercolors uh, later on. Okay, so just some perspective lines running running through the buildings like that, and I also want to get in some more cars, maybe a larger one um, coming over this side, one that sort of shows the side a little more as well. So we've got a larger one there. Kind of like this and the back of it in. You're just thinking of them as kind of boxes, uh, little boxes on wheels and, uh, you know, circles. That's a circle. That's a circle there, a circle, a circle. And then, um, you know, a little box shape on top like that. Um, that's how I simplify things down, make it uh, a little bit more easier in my mind to, to draw anyway. Uh, you know, here's another car coming forward it's almost about to hit this guy there and that sort of goes all the way behind disappears behind him like that okay I might also think of putting in another figure uh, here in the distance 
get in maybe a leg like that and then another leg here looking like he's walking across there there could be also someone uh here that just with the back turned and leg forwards and uh, this other leg back oops back like that kind of like walking off in that direction okay and a bit of hair for this person like that i think we're ready to go with the sketch so i think that took about 10 minutes it shouldn't really take all that long i've got a brush here just a little little uh call it mop brush let me see if you guys can see the video um I can see, sorry, if you can see my palette. Let's reduce down the reference photo. If you if you can't find the reference photo, it's actually in the links. Um, you just check out the the, uh, the the first link that I posted in the in the live. It has the reference photos there. I've just had to reduce this down so that you can see what I'm doing with the with the uh, what do you call it palette? Hey, great, um, Yvonne. Nice to see you, Yvonne. Um, Four thirty. You were here at uh, you were here at five thirty last time. You really get up pretty early. Um, yeah, impressive. <laughs> yeah, four thirty. It's um, pretty dark already here in in Melbourne, and it's about six. About six thirty. The sun's down. So um, nice to see you here, Yvonne. And you can always watch it later if you got stuff on during the day, which you most definitely um, would. So I'm going to go in and um, firstly I'm going to think what kind of uh, color I want to use for this whole scene. And I want to just continue a little bit with this, um, I, I guess this theme of this monotone sort of, uh, you know, theme here. There are some blues kind of in the background, uh, but I'm going to continue on and let's pick up, say, a bit of, A bit of gray and this muck muck here on the on the uh, so just drop us drop some of that into the sky like that and i think also i will put in some blue in there just a little bit of cerulean blue a bit of cerulean blue because it's going to look just too flat if i don't add something in there it looks like the the sizing of the paper is okay. I'm using the back side of the paper. People always ask, um, you know, can you use both sides of the paper? And you, yeah, you certainly can. It doesn't make a huge difference, but the texture is a little bit different. Um, definitely is a, a little bit different when you're using uh, the back of, of uh, any type of watercolor paper. Sometimes it can be a bit smoother. Um, Sometimes it can be a bit rougher. So there we go. So just a little a sky in there, and it's very light sort of mix, as you can see that I'm using. And uh, you know, it might drop in a you know little bit of purple just for good measure. And for the rest of it, I'm going to continue on and start just painting a little color into everything. And I always like to go with some kind of warmer type of mix. And so here I'm just going with this darker sort of warm mix that I've got left over on the palette. Um, just using up some of the old colors that I had before. Yvonne, I will catch up. Let me just bring this up. I will catch up with what I missed later. But you are definitely better than the news. <laughs> yeah, look, I, I've given up watching the news Yvonne over here in, in Melbourne, it's just doom and gloom. And uh, yeah, yeah, I've um, definitely agree with you on that one. This is much more fun. <laughs> so uh, just bring up the reference again. It's a little bit of color through there. Um, have some fun, experiment around with what colors you think might work in this section. Uh, I, I do like, I think a bit of, a bit of brown in here would be nice. A bit of sepia. Uh, this. And then I've also added in a bit of burnt sienna. Okay. 
So I'm just going down like that. And also, if you've got a larger round brush, this uh, works really well. Just a bit of getting a bit of color with that round brush like that. Um, I'll put in a slightly warmer mix of color here for the buildings in the back. A little wash of that color. And it's just a, a bit of yellow ochre, but I have dropped in some, what is it? Some Hansa yellow. And let it just mix around and do its thing here in the background. Okay. Um, so, I, you know, already I've changed this reference picture a, a fair bit from what it, you know, color wise, um, it does look a fair bit different. So, I'm going to cut around these cars. And as we move down the page here, um, I, I'm going to just darken off this mix a bit more. Okay, something like that. But remember this first wash, we're just trying to get in, uh, just to, you know, try to get in a lot of the, the basic mid-tones and the, you know, the lighter areas especially. So, you know, as we come down the page, I'm going to just pick up some more, maybe a little bit of ultramarine, put up a more, bit of ultramarine. Notice how I'm working from top to down as well. It's just feels more natural this way so that the color just all flows downwards and we've got a bit of a um just just a bit more smoother sort of mix because uh, if the water runs down rather than kind of pools in places i find it just looks better so there we go just cutting around um you might get some little pooling and bits at the bottom here okay and we'll do the same here for that one on the left. I think I'll just pick up the same kind of reddish brown sort of mix. Just drop that in there. Uh, I don't really know exactly how this will, will turn out, but um, we'll see. We'll see how we go. Now, these are meant to be real quick and spontaneous type of sketches where you want everything to run together and in fact even in you know some of my more detailed watercolors i always like to get things to to run together and blend so that it looks more cohesive rather than having um yeah just i, I guess rather than having something that uh that sticks out here and there so Little wash of color over the top. Um, we're going to cut around some of these figures and the cars over here. Um, more of these cars like that. Look at how we just need to chop around those top sections like that. Got most of that in now. And for the ground, all we want to do is just get in a little bit of um, warmer color. So, in fact, what I'll do is that I'm going to get the car like that. Um, and we might have a bit of blending going through. Uh, I don't want it to blend too much, but essentially just make sure that that bottom section is going to be lighter. Okay, so kind of like that. Uh, I'm going to bring that across. Don't worry too much about that figure. Just like that. Um, there. There. Bring this down. Just connect that up. And we want to leave some of the windscreens uh, with a white sort of uh, section on top, okay? But remember, your main goal here is just to get a cohesive wash over the entire area. Uh, if you can get some mid-tones in, that's a bonus. Otherwise, we can wait for that. And I often do uh, just do all the that other stuff in the later steps a bit more saturated yellow into the, the ground it just looks too yeah just want to try a bit more of that saturated yellow in there something like that um yeah great great um sure what i don't think i'll leave that okay so i want to give this a really quick uh, really, really, really quick dry, and Nerida, uh, thanks Nerida for your, your um, chats. Uh, just watching here might join in after dinner. It's six thirty p.m. and look forward, looking forward to watching your coloring. Fantastic. Um, so 
it'll dry off. Mute the microphone. Okay, just unmuted and you can see here that it's got a really um just a general wash of colors a bit of coolness in the sky and the rest of it is just warmth cool then warm again at the bottom um so yeah it's really uh really good good fun to to sort of do these um sketches a lot of the time when i start out painting you're kind of thinking you know you've got to get everything ready this and that but if you start off with the easiest painting you can do something simple just a quick sketch like that which takes about five minutes um you're much more likely to um to get into things and um so you always do the easiest thing first uh, if you're struggling to get into the into the actual watercolor painting itself so sketching having a sketchbook um, whether you make one or whether you buy one they're really good value uh, because they just allow you to have the convenience. Just pull one out, have a bit of a play around. Um, this is one that I bought a while back. So, but you can get these made bound for you in um, office supply shops. Get the paper. Um, just reading a message. Um, Paramita Roy says it's two p.m. here in India. Didn't know about this live session. Suddenly came across it. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it was an unplanned one, but I'm thinking maybe of scheduling, you know, a similar one in next the, uh, Wednesday. This is just a bit of sketching practice. So uh, I like to do some sketching in the evenings, and the last week I, I'd done something like this, and people found it quite helpful. So thought I'd do a do another one. So um, if you're in the middle of something, then um, you can always watch it later. But appreciate you appreciate you being here. And we've also got just a little, uh, just a little uh, comment. Nero, do they look like autumn trees? And uh, almost do. They do. They've got a very warm sort of color. But hopefully, they will turn into buildings. <laughs> um. Anyway, so I have uh, a chance here now to get in uh, a few different colors. And what I want to do first is just address this background area. We always want to paint from light to dark, especially things in the far background um, first. You want to paint in first, okay, so that you can um, basically give that, that area an opportunity to dry. Um, and then when you do uh, go through with a bit of the details later, it will be there waiting for you. So I've got a number 10 round brush and I'm going to mix up a whole bunch of colors here. And I've got, I got here, I've got ultramarine blue. I go through these blues like crazy. Uh, I just use them a lot in my darks. So it's a very nice sort of ultramarine. I have a bit of water in there. It's ultramarine. Then I'm going to pick up a bit of, uh, Bit of pyral red drop that in there kind of like a dulled down purplish color and a little bit of hansa yellow so that should give me a dark sort of color um but you know like i always do i, I just mix up a few different versions of my dark so this is ultramarine plus burnt umber uh, raw umber sorry and it um you know, the, essentially you can make a warm uh, gray or a cool gray just by mixing ultramarine and uh, raw or burnt umber. So the, the, the umber sort of adds the warmth 
the ultramarine adds uh, the coolness okay you like that color a little bit better okay we've also got what else do we have we've got a little bit of neutral tint here it doesn't matter all too much okay but i like i do like this color i'm gonna mix in a few bits and pieces in here and shiver welcome shiver and it's 12 40 p.m here in the uae good time for you then midday maybe you're having lunch so uh let's go ahead a little bit of color here for the background and I'm going to keep this actually a little, a bit more bluish, more of a, a bluish color. Just drop that in, um, testing it first to see what it looks like. Okay, so something like that. And I'm trying to paint all these shapes in with the least amount of brush strokes. Um, okay, so that's a couple of domes. I've just painted in a whole bunch of these domes with a few tiny little brush strokes move down page like this and um, these are kind of our mid-tones here in the background sort of where it now starts to hit the um, you know this section here of the the wall and we've got a little section here where it's comes down like that and we cut around the cars there there if it's too light just drop in some more paint in there while it's uh, all still wet i do like to darken up the bottom parts a bit more okay there we go we're just leaving some of those cars in and um, this part will all kind of dry off a bit while that's happening i'm going to be picking up some of this color drop that in here now this building this building here is pretty dark but there are some kind of um milky sort of mixes up in here for these sort of smoke or whatever in the building so um i think maybe we can we can try and get some of those bits and pieces in there so I'll, I'll drop a bit of water there and see what happens but look at that it's just one shape just trying to draw this whole building with one shape uh, a few brush strokes and you know it connects onto another building here perhaps like that and then it comes connects onto that wall so all joins up together and the stuff in the background is significantly lighter so i'm just cutting across now and you know there's areas here where i just want it to be darker so that we've got some contrast for the cars okay so move that down look at this that figure that around that figure and hit the the ground there that mess mess in there um fantastic and let's see what else we're gonna do we just same thing here this this building here to the left it's pretty dark so i'm gonna whoops i'm too high up that's okay and it goes up there and comes down like that a bit more blue a bit more blue there's barely any shadows or light or anything on these buildings because they're just um facing the uh, uh well backlit so you can it can even imply a bit like that so i've left a little slither of of, of color of uh, yellow there okay that around let's have a look what do we have around here let's rough that up a bit there Okay, just trying to paint everything in one big shape and hopefully um, it will work out. Yeah, yeah, come down here like that. Great. And I think that will do the trick for those buildings. Another thing that I really like to do as well is if you've got a, a little rigger brush, you can pick up some, uh, a bit of that paint and just start putting in some small details like this and that way you get some of these bits and pieces just melting in and not sticking out all too much later so you can draw with these little rigger brushes like what i'm doing here imply some details on top of the buildings stuff like that even uh, wet into wet so if you want to put in a couple of windows like this there you can always uh, do that sort of thing as well um, little lines running down the building 
indicate some uh, bits of bits of detail, even these little perspective lines running through the buildings like that. If you do them wet to wet, it you notice like it just doesn't look as obvious and uh, it, it leads to a more abstract kind of feel. So I'll move on further down and start picking up some darker paint, just neutral tint, a bit of blue. Um, let's have a look, a bit of brown, put in a bit of really shadow underneath the car and also um, on the car. That. Drawing this all up nicely, using very thick paint. It's almost uh, very, very thick paint. Yeah, you know that shadow under the car there. You know we've we've got another shadow for that car under the back there. Just very quick sort of marks on the page like this, and join them up. This there there uh, maybe you know, this sort of truck or whatever it is here as well. Just darken this one up more and then work on the the wheels. Just a just great practice because if you do uh, tons of these cars and things in um, in these ones, you'll find that later when you have to uh, pull it off in a you know in a more detailed painting, it just is a lot easier because you've already done the the hard work with it. So a little bit of detail there for the legs and this one here too yeah have a bit of a shadow underneath that one connect up the legs and uh, oops a bit of a shadow connect up with this figure as well that didn't that one didn't turn out all so good but uh well, me too um a few couple little legs for this figure here as well shadow like that there okay um might even add some you know a little bit of blue for the windscreen windscreen okay, just some a little bit of cerulean dropped in there quick quickly and allowing a bit of that to mix around there okay a bit of um, detail for the figure let's get some Let's get some red or something for this one and uh, mix in a bit of blue so we get some purplish color. I just want some, just want a bit of, a bit of uh, warmth in that one here as well. Just a bit of warmth in that figure there. A bit of darkness for this one. Um, okay, fantastic. Where else can we put in an arm or something here? There, holding onto some kind of bag or here on the side of the um, person. Uh, also, maybe some color, just a bit of red paint that I'm going to use. Head, tiny bit of red paint, like that. Oh, blend that into the body. Um, Kind of to keep it too thick. There we go. Another bit of paint there. I like to do it while while the paint's still wet. Um, fantastic. And uh, oh, another another message uh, chat from Wendy. Got to go. I'm halfway through my sketch and we'll finish watching later. Fantastic. Um, uh, yeah, I'll um. It'll all be up later, so um, I'll catch you then. And if you've got questions, just just let me know um, later as well. These are just real quick, fun, fun sketches. And just thinking, what else we need to do for this one? I, I think we're almost done. I'm just going to dry it off, and I'll show you how to add on a few um, finishing little finishing touches to it. But if you can think of any questions, or if you're, you're new here, you're just watching, and there's a few of you out. Out there watching, uh, just um, leave me 
message if you have any any questions and I'll get back to you. Okay. Now, finishing touches. Finishing touches. Um, really, what I want to do is just add on um, some last uh, little windows and things like that. You want to pick up dark kind of paint, um, dry it off a little bit. Okay, dry the brush off. Pick up some of this dark paint, dry it off, and then from here you can go ahead and, and kind of draw in. Um, Bit. So here underneath that dome, for example, there's something there, that little line, and up the top like that. Um, there, you know, you might want to get a few of those little indications in like that, indicating the, the sort of spherical uh, structure of the dome. Something like this, uh, you know, there's all these other ones which have kind of disappeared out a little bit. So I'm just, you know, putting a little bit of color in them, using that as a way to draw out some extra details. Um, this, and you know, you've also got things like these, look like um, poles or something, of little traffic poles here in the background. I'll probably get that in later on with a smaller, a smaller sort of brush. But um, you know, for example, this can be a door. That could be a, something else as well. There, um, a bit of this reinforcement of the floors of this um, building and you can put in a few little details for example of um, some of the the windows and things on the sides of the building and they're not hard to see them something like that just gets you it's a good good sort of way to practice your perspective because you can see the building the lines the perspective lines of the building kind of running down like that and putting the windows down, that kind of trains your mind to uh, to know how to you know draw them in in that sort of array. So a bit of that coming through. Notice the the dry brush work and the detailing at the back is a little bit lighter as well, and maybe a little bit of this here, some windows here for this building. I know it's not they're not really there, but I think so anyway. Also here for this truck or the bus or whatever, I just you know tuck a little bit down on the on top of it like that. And a few little birds okay. that. Um a really quick fun little sketch that you can do in uh you know twenty to thirty minutes and what you can also practice is your little little details. So you're just drawing things like this, you know, things that come off the roof. And maybe you want to try doing one of these, um, line, uh, what do you call them, like tram lines or something that are just running through the the scene. You can sort of have a practice and play around with doing these as well in an environment where it just does not matter whether it works out or not. You're just practicing, seeing what happens. Notice how I keep going back to the, I keep going back to the, to the towel, kind of out of the, out of the um, camera, but um, keep going back to sort of dab that brush on there, change up the consistency of paint. And put in a few little lines on the ground too, just some perspective lines, or something like that. There, back there, here, there, that, I like that one there. Oh, doesn't matter. 
Um, and then you can pick up some really dark colors and just draw in. It's lights and poles and things like that. Just in your darkest colors, um, you don't have to be perfect with them, just a few recess, uh, receding back into the and distance. Again, just practice with your just that additional practice with drawing lines it helps. So, um, right now, what I'm going to do is maybe pick up a teeny bit of I've got a bit of white gouache here, and then a little bit of ultra uh, not ultramarine, a little bit of cerulean blue. Mix those together, and I want to maybe get in with this person indication of this person's shirt. He's got a blue shirt on there. Try that off. Just put in a little little uh, mark like that. Got to dry that brush off first so that it doesn't look too stuck on. Um, just things like that, and you can even put some into the buildings. Just some little dashes of of blue or little dashes of of this blue color in there. Okay. Um, here we go. That's a quick little sketch. So uh, I'll attempt another one. Just gonna close the blinds here. Just... Dry it off here. So if uh, yeah, anyone out there, your any questions, just feel free to ask. Feel free to ask me. I'm probably going to end this stream at eight, eight-ish, maybe a bit after, so I can grab something to eat. I've also got a um, invited to to um, chat on some podcast with with Etcher. So quite looking forward to that later. But I do need to eat as well. So. Okay, so continuing on with this one, and uh, just a message from Shiva, Shiva Hona, hope I, I uh, pronounced your name correctly. Thank you for this informative tutorial. You're very welcome. Uh, I'm just, you know, this is one of my evening activities, just doing a little bit of sketching. Um, I've got a normal job as well during the day, but after afterwards, I, you know, just a good way to, to sort of wind down and get those uh, creative juices flowing. It's a very easy way to, um, yeah, just a very easy way to get to get started. So this is a scene of London, Big Ben, and it was actually one of the photos when I was doing uh, the live class, the pen and wash class of drawing Big Ben. I had a whole bunch of reference photos, and this is just one of them. I often download a whole bunch and then I struggle then to figure out which one to choose. Um, so I thought, why not give this one a try here? So what do I like about this photo? What do I not like? So I, I love the softness in the background, uh, especially on that left-hand side. Um, I love the shadows as well coming in from the, the light coming in from the left, coming out from the right, the class and the shadow. But I do want to see a bit more of that footpath um, and perhaps perhaps a lamp, just to see what that, a lamp might look in there. I don't have a reference of a lamp, but I still want to try putting one in there, hopefully. So let's go ahead and give this a try. I'm not going to shift the horizon line all too much. I like where it is. It's sort of just below the halfway point, somewhere about here. Draw that in kind of like that. And now what I want to do is just start working on this car first. I'm going to look at all this stuff in the front. 
and um, the horizon line is sort of around the same part where this the bridge the side of the bridge is like that so there's a car that sort of comes in a very large car sort of around here uh, near the front so i'll draw some of this the detail of the car in okay and a bit of the rooftop as well kind of comes off to the side comes down like that there um and then you've got the hood like this and then we've got a bit of this sort of squarish shape here in the front um what else do we have we've got a, a kind of light that pops out here we've got another light that comes out here and we can just carry this on downwards uh, and downwards and this can be uh, the little license plate here um there and then we got a, a wheel that just starts uh just finishes sorry underneath the 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 light so i'm just going to draw that in there we go it doesn't look the best but it will hopefully work out um another wheel here okay uh yeah, yeah. great way to practice your drawing skills and there and we've got a, a larger wheel uh sorry a back wheel that sort of pops through like that there we go and that's your that's your that's your car okay so now there is this big shadow that's just been cast i love this shadow i don't know why but i'm just obsessed with shadows um and and what i think i'll do is uh try to think what we can we can try to do just maybe get a that can be perhaps this can be the footpath the start of the footpath and then over here this can be the uh the side of the, the what do you call it the, the bridge and uh, let me just try to get in an indication of a of a lamp i don't really have uh, i don't have a reference of a lamp but i'm just going to draw one in uh like this there something like that um maybe have a few here in the background that are a little bit a little smaller like that okay and here i'm gonna get in some people so we've got a head on the horizon line someone a body here that um it's going to be a little bit taller than the car like this okay and coming down and we've got the legs just a couple of legs one here and one here maybe one behind um another person just sitting next standing next to the other one that and it's the largest dress and then legs coming out the bottom like that uh you know we might have another person off here in the distance and for some reason they are wanting to cross the road so you know there we go bit of bit of um action going on here and you know we've got all these figures that are just walking along this side and uh look i'm just simply getting in a few of these some of them in crowds in groups some of them just by themselves uh like that there really isn't uh, uh, a whole lot of detail there and you know i think what i might want to do actually should i put in another car here let me think should i put in another car uh, hmm i might do it i might do it um I don't have anything else to sort of go by except for that one so i'm going to copy the general shape of it and maybe just get it to run down a bit more so that it looks just a bit more rough rough around the edges and um, oops here is the side of it here down there oops could be more around here Raise this bit much to start off with. Um, also, started drawing in some of these figures. Um, but going to show my process here it does change as, as you go. So, 
uh, don't feel like you have to get it all right the first time around. It does. It just doesn't happen that way. And in fact, there's a lot of trial and error going on in here. There we go. It looks a bit more like a car. Um, maybe it, it almost looks like a SUV or something. It's a really odd looking, very odd looking uh, SUV. Okay. Um, it all around with that one a bit too much. Uh, let's put in a few more figures here in the background. Little person walking there, someone walking here, um, like that. And most importantly, we've of course got these buildings here in the background. So the the good thing about these these buildings is that they all form one big shape. So I'm going to go and just put them in. And firstly, let's do the simple thing. It's just a large section like that coming down. And then you've got a section that kind of comes up like that there. You've got a section that comes out there. And then over here, you've got um, Big Ben. So with a few simple lines, you have already essentially drawn in most of those buildings. So rest of it, rest of it is just uh, refinement and just adding in some more details depending on how much you want to you want to put in here just tidying up some of these lines if they're a bit messy uh, well, the whole thing is quite messy actually kind of on a bit of a, a slant as well unfortunately so you know you can just go ahead and try to change up a few of that a few of those things there um and thinking i can get in a little bit of the side of as well that would be nice to the side there we have some light coming off the side of the building uh, the clock tower there just preserved on this just a little slither of it um, should do the trick there we go we have separations like that look at that just there's so much stuff going on in here that um, for a sketch you can get a bit overwhelmed but remember to just simplify these things down you know that you know that is part of a you know just a rectangle you know you've got this part here that goes up um where does it start kind of around here down another rectangle uh, like this then it has a edge kind of coming out like that there there we go another rectangle and then we've got all this sort of stuff coming up yeah all this stuff here here there's a bit of i don't know what's what's on that side but i'm gonna just make up a building there something like that i'm um, just behind this yeah there's only some cars here actually let's just reduce this down a bit to show a car there something there okay and uh we have over this side and you know, we've got a bit of a tower that just sort of pops out and pop like that and mm, 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 mm. like this there and another section here another rectangular sort of shape there um another one here looking at their rough sizes as well to make sure that they're not not drawing them too uh, tall or too sort of wide as well. A little bit of that, a little bit of that. There we go. And here there might be a little, yeah, there's another tower or something like that there that's popping out. I actually missed out that there are some of these lamps here as well. Use this one as a reference. That's okay. Um, it's a bit exaggerated, I suppose. A lot of things going on, but that will be okay. Or the sketch um, I was sort of thinking of maybe getting someone also uh, perhaps um, walking across the road here if I can do it I keep this I don't make it too messy though okay that might be that might be all right someone just standing here waiting to cross um road like that holding onto something on the side 
Okay. Good little sketch, and we are much ready to get painting. Now, we've got a brush, just a normal watercolor mop brush. And let's see, what do we want to do? What do we want to do with this sky? Um, what, I, what I think I'll do is actually get in a bit of turquoise, turquoisey sort of color further down. Begin with, I will start off by mixing up a bit of yellow and a bit of yellow ochre together. I find the yellow ochre just dulls things down a bit. Okay, get this, you know, fairly thick as well. All I want to do is just uh, put in some of this color running through like that. And get that paint, get that all in in one go. Um, you know, I think I'll just go over the cars as well. Uh, uh, uh. There, there, a few little brush strokes there, here, okay, um, fantastic, and um, as I go, we go up from this area with the buildings, just going to dilute this down a bit, just diluting that colour down slightly, okay, and on the top section, this is where I am planning to put in a bit of Let's have a look. We've got a bit of blue and a bit of yellow, uh, yellow ochre, a bit of yellow ochre mixed with a bit of Naples yellow. Or you can just mix um, a bit of that blue with some gouache, a bit of ultramarine with a tiny bit of gouache um, like this. Let's try that. Okay, so that, I don't know, that looks okay, but we'll, we'll see if it works. Um, see if it works this is a test so it's very thick up the top um maybe i've gone a bit too much but we will see so yeah, drop that in there we go a few brush strokes as i can manage to just get this guy in um it looks all right it looks all right i might Get the spray bottle out, give it a quick sort of spritz. That line just looks too. Um, so I want it to be softened slightly. Yeah. Soften a little. There we go. Soften a bit of that up. Um, fantastic. And uh, we can also just sort of drop in maybe a bit underneath. Create a slight gradient so that it all of a sudden start. All right, I'll um I'll deal with that. Uh, I'll deal with how that looks. I think that will dry okay. Um, so some more color below. I'm going to pick up some yellow ochre. Drop that straight in there, yellow ochre, the ground, and a bit of maybe a bit of lemon yellow too. Uh, unusually, unusually um, bright, sunny day in London. I've never seen it look like this when I was over there, anyway. Um, but I like that color combination. It works. It works nicely. It kind of looks a bit. Pastelli sort of color, and we really just drag this down. Maybe a bit of, a bit of this here as well as uh, um, we call it burnt sienna. Okay. Cut around the figures because I want to get in some different colors for their clothing. Okay, why we just want to be more careful. Here we go, and as we come down to the fore, um, yeah, just the foreground. I, I like to just darken up a little like that. A bit of a nice gradient from light to dark. Up a bit of the extra, or if you don't like sort of drying in there. Um, and then we've got these people here. So some colors would be nice, obviously. I, I think a bit of purple. Let's get some purple for the figure here on the right. It may not really look like purple. Let me just mix up some proper. 
purple. Um, bit of magenta, bit of ultramarine, and just drop that in like this. You know, and and you say, look, the but the you know the area hasn't dried yet. That's okay. Just let it mix because it's going to look more cohesive if you do this. But control how far it spreads. You don't want it to go all over the place. But a bit of mixing is be perfectly fine. Yeah, like that. Okay, the one on the left, maybe. Yeah. Let's try. Bit of this whatever's left over here in the palette. I'm not really sure. Maybe some red in there as well. Yeah. And some one in there. Maybe a bit of brown. Maybe a bit of brown in this section. Like that. And and you know you can also leave the the figure white. You may be wearing a white shirt. You don't feel like you need to just because I'm doing it. There we go. Figure there. Sort of just standing around. I'll leave them. Okay, so time. I'm just going to go dry this off a little bit. And some bits of things dried off here, gathered at the bottom. Um, you'll see there's about, um, about there's some of you watching out there. So if you're, yeah, if you if you're watching and and uh, you want to, got some questions, just let me know in the, in the comments. A very last minute stream, so. Glad to have a few of you. Um, glad to have a few of you watching. A little dry off now. I'm going to mute the microphone so it doesn't um, deafen you. Okay, all dried off, and the, the colors haven't really changed all that much. They've lightened a little bit, but apart from that, they're looking quite similar. So most of this I'm going to paint with a number eight round brush. And um, it's from a pack that got, these were sent to me for free from, from Zen Art. A uh, pack of their their uh, brush brushes. Um, I'm going to... Go ahead and um, get some shadows in. So if you look at the reference picture, there's really not much going on in the background. The background is just um, it's almost like one color fading to a lighter color over there. I think I'll try to exaggerate, uh, especially in some of these buildings here, just exaggerate a little bit of that color. So I will pick up firstly some ultramarine blue and just mix that in with uh, some of this uh, burnt umber, raw umber, yeah, and a bit of darker sort of color. Now I want it to be, you know, not a sort of nice juicy sort of color. Um, a bit more of that, a bit more of that warp in there. This something like that. Okay, maybe a bit of burnt sienna, blue again there. Okay. And we'll do a test like that, and that's looking okay. So just a bit of a work around. Um, I've also got this other number six round brush that may be more suitable actually. So let's come across, and then we're gonna think: okay, where are the shadows gonna be in the light? So over here, um, you know, we've got a bit of light cutting uh, this side of that building so i'm going to just leave this edge here like that okay Something like that um 
the, the, the less you touch it, the better, really. There. Okay, maybe a bit here. That. That side. And coming through, you know, um, again, following that same sort of pattern of light. Top here, there's a bit more detail. And join that up slightly, bring it down here. Okay. Same here for this one, maybe this one here. That. Okay, just a few little bits and pieces. Uh, okay. I accidentally mixed a bit of blue in there, but we'll be okay. I'm cutting around that car a little bit as well. It have a funny car, doesn't it? Yeah. Bring that down. A bit more blue in here. Um, well, I'm actually liking that blue, so I don't mind using it. It's got this misty sort of feel to it. Yeah, I know you got the, the bridge off here. Hard to see. There. And we've got Big Ben with I'm just gonna paint this in. I'm just gonna get a light wash over the top like this. Maybe just indicate this top section slightly, not too much going on, so that I can indicate more details perhaps later. There we go. Um, also, what's going on is that there's a whole bunch of this little, these little bits and pieces on top of the roof so there's these little uh, old but areas of the building so i'm going to try to put them in right now just a few um brush strokes and things like that simplified down obviously not as per the reference you need, but some things in here like that so draw in little sections of sort of bits where the building separates up like that. Yeah. Yeah. What so have we got? Just little little details. Uh, like that. Maybe here we got a few little things that stick out into the uh to the air. Not really how I really how I look at it just Bits and pieces of that more here on that side. Um, it's looking okay. So I kind of bring this whole wash over to that right hand side. I'm going to add some a little bit of green in here. Okay, a little bit of green, and it doesn't quite matter what color you use as long as it's dark, and uh, we use that. Uh, to cut around these figures, okay, yes, there, and you know, there's also this lamp which I thought, why not get it in now? Hey, just a blue indication of that lamp that these um, street lamps draw them in, like real basic, like this. Yeah. There we go, that's another one. We got a oh, there's another one here. Yeah, a few little things and blend that on with the buildings or whatever you have indicated here on that right hand side. That's probably be a bit too dark actually, so I'm gonna lift off a bit of that paint. Um bring this across like this and uh great to sharpen up some spots uh, here and there. Where obviously we've got, um, you know, these cars and things here in the uh, foreground. Okay, this is the this is the bridge as well. So there is some darkness underneath there too. Uh, I'll have to get that in probably with another wash. It's a limit to the amount of detail that you can put in in, in one wash, or it starts looking a bit too uh, messy. So. Just got to be wary of that. Bit of color for the cars. So remember, I just want to also um, 
also be able to imply the light coming in from the left hand side. So this is just what I'm doing, just getting a, a little bit of that darker paint, putting it through here like that, and then just getting the sides of that car in, um, darker in some sections around here, especially underneath the, the wheels, uh, where the wheels are too. So um, a tiny bit of that going on is good. Indicate the windscreen, the bottom part of the windscreen, like that. And just sharpen this section a little there. And blending a bit more. Wheels, I'm going to get in pretty dark. Something like this. Hope it blends a bit better. There. Okay. Leave a bit of color in there. Well, um, great. I'll just do the same thing for all the others. So here, that's supposedly a car. Bit of shadow running towards the right. Um, there, this bit underneath here as well. Okay. There. Um, there. Bit of darkness here. Let's have a look what else can we do. Notice how I'm just trying to join everything up. So I'm not trying to keep all these cars and things separate. In fact, there's some places where it just starts to get um, blended into the background, but that's okay. As long as you just leave the, the main bits of white, uh, not white, but the lighter areas of the car in, um, you're going to be absolutely fine. Okay, I'm using all kinds of colors. I don't even know what color I'm using anymore, but um, you know, look, that's the side of the car. Having it come in like this, like I said, it is a bit of a funny, a funny sort of car, isn't it? Doesn't look exactly how, um, well, of course, nothing looks exactly how it it uh, does in this little sketch, but um, that's why it's a sketch. So here is the point where we want to think about shadows. So neutral tint, bit of blue. And maybe a bit of red, a bit of red mixed in here. Okay. And we've got some purplish color, maybe put in a bit more raw umber. And I think that will get you a pretty nice sort of gray color. Um, so let's do this. There, sharp sort of edge, and it comes down here. There is a person here as well. I'm gonna just put the leg in of that person joins onto that shadow. Something like that. Okay, the torso here. And we got a section of the shadow coming in like this. Alright. Blending on with the wheels. All combines. Okay. And um, let's see, maybe we can just get this in behind the, the figures as well. And should go actually further down like this. Yeah. That should that should be enough for that one. Um okay. Try this one. There, there, that. Leave that little bit of light underneath the car. It's gonna help so much. You miss if you don't get that bit of light under the car, it's just going to look like one big shape. Should be more towards that side. There, I think you're only just correcting it in areas. Um, another sharp sort of shadow. I'm just planning it out, obviously, thinking in my head, practice kind of like practicing first in the air, and then continuing on. Like this, that, that, okay, there we are, big shadow, then we've got this figure here, I want to join on with, the, again, that same shadow, put the legs in like this, here we go, just a couple of legs there, and um, let's get in a little shadow joining on to this car. 
there. Knew it was a good idea to put in that one. It's almost smack bang right in the middle of the scene, but um, but it works. It kind of joins everything up. It almost I always feel like there should be something here as well, um, like a, an imaginary shadow cast by another car. So you can even just do something like that, just imaginary shadow coming across um, there that I don't know if that works so well but uh, we'll have to deal with it we'll have to deal with it now um of course one thing we've forgotten is these figures um checking the chats again Linda I'm so glad I happened to land on this half 10 in the morning in the UK hope my friend Yvette uh, Paul sees this too yeah Yvette um known Yvette for a fair, fair bit online and we i think we were part of a bunch of forums watercolor forums so uh yeah hope she's hope she's around um yeah i got some good feedback on on these little sketch videos that i did last time so i thought i'd do another one and um kind of me as well you know it's good it's great practice so um i love love doing these and i have the camera on and some people can kind of learn from it then um and it's all good. Happy. Couple of legs. Just a couple of legs. Yeah, very thick paint that I'm using. And uh leg is further behind. And now again the shadow. Uh, look at that. Just two brush strokes. Two, three. A few little brush strokes like that, okay. Um, and as you move up the figure as well, you might think, well, I kind of, you know, that jumper or whatever just looks a bit weak. Let's add in a bit of color to the right hand side like that. Add a bit of color for this one here on the right hand side too, just a kind of warm, warm sort of color here. Uh, warm, but something just joining up that figure. And uh, leaving indication of maybe uh, some lighter sections on the left hand side, like that. Uh, there, so that's some little bit of a little bit of detail, maybe some red there for the head, the heads of these figures. For that, something like this. Um, you can really notice how the shadows, just having those shadows there, just brings brings everything out makes it look like something okay and from this point on it's just details small details anything you anything that you think you want to add in here or you you want to uh, for example just fix up or amend this car here on the left, I'm just trying to change it a, a bit so that it's coming forward a bit more. It doesn't make sense. Um, that's okay. We doesn't have to be perfect as long as, as long as you're giving it a try. And you're learning something from it. All right. Uh, bit of color here on the right side of that figure bit of amendment there and uh you know let's see perhaps this person's got a bag or something they're holding on to that and this person's got a bag there yeah okay I get in a bit of stuff wet onto wet not all of it though All right, so I'm kind of happy with this. I'm going to dry it off and then we'll get in some final bits and pieces and move on to the next one. So just pause the, pause it all. Um, hey, Jocelyn, Jocelyn Stevens, uh, nice to see you here. How are you doing? And um, how's, uh, what time is it over there for you?
it was really quick dry they're almost dry completely anyway um and there's a message from lollicop lollicop uh thank you thanks for this live stream i'm very curious to get back into sketching and it's been uh very helpful fantastic it's i think sketching is 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 just um it's such a, a low effort entry um, thing well in terms of like starting a full painting or you know basically just picking up a scrap bit of paper and, and using that um to to do to to start off i think it's just um, a lot easier that's why i um that's why i sketch a lot because sometimes you, you know you've got it you've had a big day and um you know the easiest thing to do is just sort of sit down and just um rest it off for the, for the rest of the evening but if you've got some scrap paper if you've got a little sketchbook you can make your own sketchbook um the motivation's there it's a lot easier to um to just pick up something like that and sketch there's no pressure there's there's no sense of i have to get this right you're just experimenting and you're playing around 90 percent of what i've learned in watercolors is through doing these little sketches um and i have so many of them i have so many of them that just didn't work out they look terrible and i'll probably do a video on something like that later uh i don't know if, if you guys want to see um my my paintings from 2015 or want to see uh all the paintings that that supposedly didn't work out um i can show you all them as well but there are so many of them i've got hundreds of them and but the thing is is that those paintings um they're the ones that taught me the most not the ones that worked out it's always the stuff that didn't work out that um is a, is a great teacher just like many things in life and um but you know with watercolors if it doesn't work out it's not the end of the world it's just paper and paint um so we're going to go ahead and finish this one off and i'll show you what a few little elements that i'll drop in here to um further um bring out some bits and pieces so i, I do want to get in a bit of this uh perspective here a bit of perspective line um running through the scene um like that maybe another one running through like this and all the way towards the back i've gone over that figure actually something like this okay gives it a bit more dimensionality also just sort of exaggerate this one a bit more maybe have one coming out like that you know this is meant to be the side of the bridge as well um i don't want to bother all too much with with uh, getting that getting uh all correct have you a bit of color for the hair I just realized that our friends here don't have any hair yeah Go for this one as well. Darker. This. You brush strokes. This is very dark paint that I'm using. It's um, almost straight. There's a little bit of water so that they A bit of water in there, that's all. Right. Um, you know, this one probably should have some hair. And then we've got. Someone here, but you can barely tell that there's a figure there. It's just sort of behind um, in the mist. May not even look like a figure, most of you. And continue on. Uh, Susan, Susan um, Marshall. Nice to have you on, Susan. Uh, Susan's one of the, the members on, on Patreon. Um, Fascinating watching from USA, 5.30 a.m. And fantastic. You really up, really up quite early, Susan. Um, the only person that beat you from the States, I think, was um, what's uh, Yvonne. Y Yvonne Ulmer. Uh, she was up at 4.30. Uh, so that's um, some serious commitment. <laughs> well, maybe it's your normal waking time. But for me, I'm a... I... I've, I uh, finish late I go to sleep pretty late and I work up a little bit later as well than most people but it's probably because I train my body to do that 
I want to get to sleep a bit earlier. Uh, so let's let's go ahead and I'll show you just some little finishing touches we can do. So um, I, I'm going to put in just some small details in uh, the, the leftover parts. So maybe the wheel, we're getting a bit of neutral tint, a bit of, a bit of color there, a bit of darkness there for the wheel, these wheels here. Um, there may be a bit more underneath the car. We can do things like um, put in some detail for the window as well. Very rough detail as well. We don't want it to overwhelm and take over the entire scene. Um, very crucial to remember that. Just a bit of color in there like that. Okay. Um, got here the windscreen. I mean, there, there is actually... There is actually uh, more detail in there, but I think just rough it up a bit and just leave it. I, I like I like this minimalistic sort of look at the moment. Um, a bit more darkness on that right hand side of the car. That window's just disappeared in there. You just drop in a bit more paint. What happens when you're playing around too much? There. Um. Have a look. Um, buildings in the background. I, I just want to get a bit of a little bit more definition into some areas. Some little tiny uh, some pieces. These are a bit of darkness in there to outline some spots. Um, we'll even put the hands on the clock. There we go. And just a tiny bit of a clock as well. Have sections underneath like this indicate some more dimensionality. Same here, little windows, tiny little windows that just using neutral tint, or you can use any type of dark paint. A few little things on here. There's so much going on. I'm not going to bother. I'm not going to bother trying to get that all exactly. I have to just make up these windows on this car. Okay. A bit more darkness there. There. And some more darkness on the wheels joining up to the ground. That, uh, you know, we don't want to disrupt this lovely wash, this, this uh, wash that sort of joins everything up as well. So we just careful like that wheel I've kind of mucked it up a little bit um, just sticks out way too much down a little less obvious made it too wheel a bit too wide here we go another bit there but apart from that um, we are essentially done with this scene um, Little quick demonstration. Doesn't take much. Really doesn't take much to put one of these together. I really like the sky. I think the sky was good fun to do. So birds there. Make sure you keep them kind of uh, what do you call it? Like you keep them a bit more randomized so they're not all flying in this spot. Things are facing different directions. Probably clean this one up a bit later, but I'm quite happy with this.
Oh, sorry. I had the uh, I had the um, the microphone turned off. So I don't know when I stopped talking. Um, thanks, V. Perhaps this is a demonstration. I'm late arriving today. Just wondering why there's no sound coming from Darren. So, yeah, I was uh, rattling on for a bit. I don't even remember what I was saying, but um, I did read out Linda Linda Smith's uh, comment. So much fun. My first really fast sketch. Mine seems to be really sparse, though maybe uh, thinking of adding some detail maybe. So, yeah, as long as you've got the, the light areas of the sky and then you put in those shadows underneath, I th you know, at the end of the day, you can wait for them to, to dry. Um, and once, once everything dries, you can add on additional layers and the additional layers, uh, you know, for things like these lamps, um, you know, it could be for the, the figures, darkening the figures. Um, it could be strengthening some of these tree branches and things like that. So the, try the, the main thing to get, in is this first wash is so crucial um because if you have uh if, if you have this first first washing right and keep it nice and light remember that's the basis of your entire painting that creates all the light essentially so um you only get one chance of doing that anything else adding all the little details bits and pieces the darks everything like that you can go over it a few a few times obviously the more you go over it the less fresh it kind of looks but this i would say is uh, like a really crucial part of the painting you're kind of working um against time as well but if you do what i'm doing um sort of have that paper on a bit of a slant and that water pools at the bottom it gives you just a little bit more time um to get in these colors okay so i'm gonna get in a bit more a bit more of this red and a bit of yellow at the bottom. Uh, yeah, good morning from Florida. This is uh, V. Thanks so much for joining again, V. Uh, thank you. Love those colors. Cheers. Um, I've done a couple more demonstrations actually before uh, this one, so you can like check it out later. I'm just trying to get this one done. Maybe the last one. I was actually trying to do four. Trying to do four demos. Four, four little sketches. I was hoping. Um, I don't know if I'll have enough time. We'll try, but the last one may not be so good. While you're painting fast, you also don't want to rush things. There's a there's a difference between um, you know making sure that you're you're painting um, you know between loosely you know painting loosely, painting too fast because you you also got to think about what you're doing. Um, every time I put paint in here, there's always some, there's a reason why I go back in there. Uh, you know, for this particular reason, I just want it to be a little bit darker down the front. Um, that's basically it. Okay. So I'm going to dry this off and, uh, hopefully remember to turn that microphone back on again. Um, but yeah, have a think if you have any questions, let me know. All right. Okay, set everything now. Microphone's on. Um, so uh, this is all dried off, and I'm going to go in and start putting in all the details of all this, all the darks. And plan this out first, though. Um, I think what I'll do is start by getting in. Um, Let's have a look. Let's get in the background first. I'm always a big fan of getting in the background first. And we can try to put, put it in in a bit more, uh, faster. I don't want things to be too... Um, uh, we don't want things to be too detailed in the background. 
I can move it to that brush. I'm using the wrong one. So number eight, number eight round brush here. Okay. I'm giving that a little test to see if it's dark enough. And I just want to get a silhouette of these um, bits and pieces in. I'm not trying to detail them all that much, but you know, with structures like this, um, you know, this is supposedly meant to be uh, Big Ben. We just need to spend a tiny bit more time um, getting the, the top part of it in. Yeah. That. And that down. Okay. There we go. Um, should be okay. So some structures you just got to uh, attend to more because they're defining structures. It, uh, it's just important. So I'm cutting around that figure now and we're going down. And remember, this section of the water is all just kind of light. So we, we don't want to go over that part of the water. We just want to get in the darks of these buildings here in the background. Just working with this quickly and uh, look, change that color up, making it a bit darker. Well, yeah. And down here, there, right around that head of that figure, there, there. Um, it's all almost the same color, except um, I'm picking up a few different different pools here on the on my palette. So th there are some blues in there as well. And then if we move over to this section, it just becomes um, a little bit more dull and uh, less detailed. That is off in that sort of section there. Okay. Now, um, this railing does need a little bit more attention. Uh, I'm going to pick up some neutral tint, some neutral tint, and I'm going to drop in some of that just so that it mixes with the background a little bit. So uh, it's quite dark. Probably one of the darkest parts. So if you just want to. Join this up. There's a bigger a couple of figures here, so I'm just going to drop this color in here. Look at that. Just one, a few strokes, just getting those strokes in one by one. Um, like that. Okay. Getting bigger as we move down to the front. Look how so big they get. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to change that a little bit so that there's uh, it's just the fence and maybe a bit of use this brush brush here maybe section just like that quickly the bottom like that that brush oops I think that one's a bit too thicker too thick at the back but uh, I will make do, we'll be okay. It's looking all right. It's looking all right. Um, water does also have a few little um, ripples and things in here. And, and you can see it shows through. It also shows through the, uh, the this fence off area. So I'm going to just drop in a few little bits in there like that just quickly. Um, and reinforce this the top part of the this railing it does get smaller as we go off into the background we don't need to imply too much there then we've got this we've essentially just you know i've made it up but there is a lamp here i'm trying to draw in just like that up There we go, a bit of a lamp, like that. Um, I'll make this some more, more kind of square shaped compare to see what the other one looks like. Stick out a bit, okay. This one as well, let's go ahead and get that one in as well. Try to paint if you if you're aiming to to paint similar sort of style to me with you with kind of a loose feeling, uh, you try to paint an object or shape in with as few brush strokes as possible. That's my 
that's my sort of strategy to keeping things looking fresh even if it doesn't look you know you know, people they might not look atomically 100% or what what have you it still um preserves a sense of freshness in there even this sort of section at the back there's really things just sticking out of the buildings that i want to drop in like that uh, could be like these some pieces here uh, just to make the buildings look a little more interesting and um, like there's something there and then this is the these are the houses of parliament i think there oh and this this building here is a bit more going on at the top there's a bit of this stuff there we go some of that there a little bit of this there oops too much excited keep this one up a bit more okay right um also this tree here i'm gonna drop that tree in add some brown the brown like that have it go straight up into the sky and then we can go ahead and um, pull out some details for the main branches. Some of them kind of this, you know, uh, completely wet line, clean sort of line like that. But then we're going to also have some that this little bit of dry brush as well. Bring this other one down here. The one there, there's all these trees going on. I don't really know, really see exactly what is going on in here. Um, but we're being quick with it. Sure. I'm just going to check to see if there's any questions, there's any any sort of chats as well. It's very hard to, at the moment because I've got, uh, I'm bringing up all the uh, chats everywhere in, um, in just one screen. So, um, uh, question from Nerida: Where is the scene from? London. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's London. It looks like. It definitely looks like London. That looks like Big Ben, sort of in the background. And uh, yeah, a while back when we were doing um, Nerida, when we were doing, uh, you know, that other Big Ben scene, I was, you know, struggling to to decide which reference picture to do. And um, this was just one of them that I managed, I kind of had left behind um, out, of a, out of a bunch. So I thought, why not give this one a try today? Um, I'm using darker colors and, and also at the moment some cooler colors in the front. And the reason for this is we've got just a lot of these yellows and things. So I, I want to balance it out uh, a bit more. Okay go just just put in some colors for the figures this is someone standing on the side there's a smaller figure there and of course can't forget this one here really just using a, a variety of dark colors i'm not too worried about what color i'm using as long as they're dark the legs just adding extra darkness in some of the legs help ground those figures a bit more Oops. Join together. Or this one, that leg behind, and we've got that leg, another leg coming forwards like this. Arms to the side. Maybe this person's carrying something. Well, I always like to holding on to something true to life. Where was I up to? I was up to this part of, of the, the painting, this sort of tree shape. So, um, you know, look at these branches. We start off with big branches, and then we 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 get the branches to go smaller uh, and split off into multiple directions. And I'm using just one brush for all of this, but um, you know, what what I want to do ideally is to also switch over 
to a uh, thinner brush, a little rigger, actually, to get in some more uh, smaller lines. So let's have a look. We've got it here, little rigger brush. Um, and so, if, for example, I can just start doing this kind of right? a lot more um, delicate brush strokes that are more controllable. Okay. Over layering going on in this section. Um, now, what I want to do is just start putting in all these like big shadows running across the, the ground, and this is either going to work or it's uh, or it's not going to work. Um, we'll see how how it uh, how this pans out. But uh, firstly, I'm going to just wet the page a little bit. Let's get a bit of water. Little water in a spray bottle. And I'm going to just spray this bottom section a little, okay? A few little squirts in there. And I'm going to let that dry for a little bit. So I... I the reason why I'm doing this is because I just want the shadows to look a bit more blended and softer uh, than the reference photo. Um, I just wanted to try something different. So that's now started to sink into the paper. Um, and a uh, comment from V, wow, the sky you painted has become the reflections of the light slower in the drawing. You taught me something that will improve my painting so much. Yeah, um, it's yeah. I'm using pretty much the same color here and there. So you just um, imagining that light from the sun is just pretty much reflecting off everything, even even the water. Um, this photo may have been edited a, a little bit um, so that it just looks kind of warmer in the water, but it's still to to life. I mean, if you're there, um, the, the water will basically just reflect. Um, Essentially, that the color of the sky from that point there, so uh, from this sort of perspective. So, um, we're going to go ahead and get in all these shadows, okay, in an experimental kind of way. I don't know how this is going to turn out, but I want to just give it a try. Um, maybe I'll use this little brush, number six round brush. I'm going to use neutral tint, a bit of blue. Bit of ultramarine blue mixed in with the neutral tint and uh, really keep an eye really keep an eye on the um on the shadows here as well and this one out I want this one maybe to come across let's put a test here like that there and to the front maybe like this it sort of gets a bigger and uh, we'll have areas which are soft and some areas which are a little bit more um a little bit more sharper mm, maybe this one kind of comes out a bit like this yeah. Yeah. there shadow of that bigger the foot oops overdone that one yeah, okay and uh, this one here, coming across to this section like that, this is a sharper looking shadow, it seems. Um, it sort of disappears off to that side. And we've also got like bits and pieces of the, this, um, oh, we call it this, this fence. Comes off of here. Soft marks. For the for that Something different yeah and it helps me to learn as well because I don't really do shadows and reflections and things like that so you know I think it's I think it looks interesting um, just for a bit of fun to try out how it works I probably would have wet this area a little bit more um, I'm going to do it again and this bit I, I was a bit sloppy. So this bit here, it should just go smaller, smaller into the distance. That's okay. Make do. Um, 
can also get in a few little few little perspective lines. Running off in this uh, vanishing point there, roughly. Help a bit more detail. Especially dig around. Quite stark looking moment. Red, a bit of red for the heads of the figures. There, there, another one here. That. Okay, some hair, a little bit of, bit of hair maybe for that one. Uh, oops, too far down. And I know I need to take a break. One, dark bits on top of this figure here to the, to the front. Maybe some longer hair, you know, coming down like that. Okay. And the, the rest of it, I think you just, um, you're essentially just playing around, adding a few bits and pieces in. So um, these are meant to be windows or something off in the, in the distance. Uh, that's little detail like that um but anyway um hope you enjoyed hope you enjoyed this one i'm going to end this stream unless anyone's got some some questions i think the first two turned out all, all right um this one I'm, I'm not too i'm not too happy with uh, to be honest but the first the first two turned out okay so there's that one uh, here for the first one, I think that's um, preserved a really fresh sort of fresh sort of feel to this scene. Um, I quite like it. This should probably be a little bit lighter though. So that's the second one. Um, a quick little scene of of London there. Uh, I do like this one and how it joins up. All the shadows just sort of join up together and. Um, creates an interesting composition. Of course, we've got this one here. Where I tried this little technique at the bottom. So I hope you enjoyed this, sort of watching me practice and play around with my uh, with my sort of sketch sketchbooks. Um, and a couple of qu couple of questions. So Zaneb Javid, um, why do you use red for the heads? Um, you don't have to use, you don't have to use red. Um, you can use, uh, essentially like any sort of skin tone that, that, that you like. I just tend to use red because it, um, it sort of dries to a sort of, um, if I mix it with, with that concentration of red with some yellow ochre and, and, uh, maybe a little bit of burnt sienna, and if you keep it light or even just red, it just dries to pink or varying levels of pink to brown uh, to even darker so you can just vary um, the the concentration but I try to keep I try to keep it still pretty light um, the actual uh, tone of it um, but anyway that's um, yeah, more of an arbitrary more of an arbitrary kind of thing and so thank you for the so thank you for the question as a name and um, V, V's got a, I'm just saying, I'm very anxious to give this a try. Um, great. And uh, I'm, I'm sure you have fun, I'm sure you have fun doing it. Uh, it's, you know, it's definitely, it's definitely something that you will learn a lot from just sketching, picking reference photos and just, um, you know, trying to turn them into a painting and just a really quick, quick painting that you could potentially, um, you know, turn into a really a, a bigger sort of one later. So the skills that I pick up from doing this uh, is just enormous. So really recommend it. Just trying any type of reference photo that you can find. Um, but I do like, and and you've noticed that I do like um, reference photos that have a lot of contrast. So I've got a background area, very dark, and then I've got this light area here and light area in the sky. 
I, I love contrasts and um, especially in these quick little sketches, um, they make a big difference. You can get away with just a few brush strokes if there's lots of contrast in your in your photos. And if you don't have contrast in the photos, you can try to make it up as well. So you can, um, you know, for example, there could be all buildings could all be light, and the ground could be light, and the sky could be light. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, you could decide maybe, um, you know, the buildings are dark and you can color them in it and it, maybe the, the sun's behind the building. So then the shadows come forwards. So painting the same scene, but trying to portray it at different times of the day is a really good strategy, a, a really good um, exercise as well. Sometimes I'll do like two paintings next to each other, like this one, but I might want to do this one um, in a nighttime scenario and the one on the right in a daytime scenario. Um, that kind of thing is important to practice because um, you, you, you know, you want to know what colors work. You want to know how dark and how light you want to go on the buildings and the directions of the shadows. So if you practice, um, you know, practice before you do a real big painting um, on these little techniques and using your sketching, um, just, you know, be fearless, just go into it. And, and it doesn't matter if you stuff it up, you'll be, you'll be more prepared. It's kind of like practicing to, to throw a ball. And you'll see when I, sometimes before I even touch that paintbrush and the paper, I'm kind of visualizing in my head, I'm moving my, my arm backwards and back and forth to picture um, roughly where I want to put the brush stroke and how I think it might turn out. So, um, yeah, I guess visualization in that sense and um, practicing the basic brush strokes and techniques. It, it, as long as you, you know, at some point, if you get these techniques um, down packed, you can pretty much paint anything. Um, but tone is a really important one to to get your head around understanding tone so i hope i can talk a bit more about it on the weekend i'm going to do some more um, demos this weekend and um see how we go so thank you all thank you all for joining me this morning or tonight or this afternoon um depending on what time it is for you and i will see you all soon thank you